morning. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? I see lightning, I hear thunder. Something stirring six feet under. Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection oh, I see signs and I see wonders I see bursts of living color Dead things coming back to life again I believe there's about to be another resurrection yeah. Oh, come on, life Wake up, sleeper He is risen We are risen with Him Hallelujah, it is finished See the grave, nobody in it Dead things coming back to life again I believe there's about to be another resurrection Yeah Oh, come If you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Do you see? What I see, I see signs and I see wonders. Do you see what I see? I see lightning, I hear thunder. Do you see what I see? Something stirring six feet under. Doing all right? Thank you, Jesus. He's risen, and we're risen with him. 
That's not just true on Easter, right? Thank you, thank you, Jesus. And we're literally risen. We're awake. We're here. Oh, what's up, kids? How's it going? Awesome. Welcome to Christian Life. Glad you're here with us. You could be anywhere. You're here in the house of Jesus to hear from him and to worship him. As we um, get ready for this next song, or Susie, are you guys coming up now? And just, okay, cool. Susie, come on up. Everyone give Susie, Susie is amazing. Everyone give Susie a hand. Good morning. It is the first Sunday of the month, so it is BGMC Sunday. And for those of you that don't know, BGMC stands for Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. And our kids, part of that challenge is they collect coins and dollars for missions so that kids all over the world can know who Jesus is. So in just a second, they're going to be spreading out to collect um, whatever you're willing to give to that offering. Um, and then after service, we are also doing a fundraiser for our kids' camp. So stick around. Our table will be right by those windows. Our kids have come together and made a couple different things to sell to raise money for kids camp. So that'll be right out there after service. All right, kiddos, go ahead. Let's stand up. We're going to spread out and get started. Let's give our kiddos a hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So this next song we're going to sing to our king is called Egypt. And when we talk about Egypt, we're thinking about the exodus and God bringing his people out of Egypt. And one of the things that came out of that was 
the Ten Commandments. And it's something that, depending on your upbringing and your background, when you hear that phrase, the Ten Commandments, part of you might kind of like, ugh, like, that's rules, that's a regulation, that's stiff, that's weird, that's like a policeman. And so if you kind of feel that way, that might be how you see God as like, oh, he's the lawgiver and he's here to punish me and tell me I'm wrong. And more modern day, we've kind of just like, commandments, uh... We kind of just ignore that stuff because we're so hyper on relationship. And what I love so much about it, the Ten Commandments, is a lot of us are familiar with commandment one through ten, but we're not familiar with the verse that begins the Ten Commandments. This is what it says. It says, God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Then the commandments come. So with God, commandments are not simply about do what I've asked you to do. The commandments of God rest on who he is and his relationship to us. Does that make sense? Right? Just parents, if you're a good parent, you love your kid, which I'm going to guess you all are if you're here. When you're saying go clean your room, you're not saying clean your room or else. You're saying as your father or mother who loves you and wants you to be a wonderful, thriving, healthy adult and not a slob, go clean your room, right? Now, we don't say that very often, but when you give a command to your child or even a a spouse, when you give a command, a direction to somebody, what's underneath it is the relationship. And that's what God is reminding his people. So he's saying, here are these 10 commandments to live by, But remember, the foundation, the whole beginning of this, why you even have the option to obey is because I brought you out of slavery. I brought you out of bondage. Now you're free to worship me. You don't have to be a slave with a whip on your back anymore. Now you're a love slave to me because I set you free and I love you. And that, I believe, is the foundation of every command that God gives us. The Father through the Old Testament, Jesus in the new and the spirit today. Every word he gives us is not a do this or else. It's a, hey, remember who I am? And remember who I say you are? Therefore, obey. Lord Jesus, would you help us to remember this? This truth, this reality, as we sing this song about you bringing us out of Egypt, and most of us probably don't have literal Egypt that you brought us out of to America, but you've brought us out of slavery, out of bondage, out of sin. God, and if we're in here today and we would say, man, I'm still in slavery. I'm still in bondage to sin. Holy Spirit, would you convict us and show us that you can bring us out with your mighty, righteous, victorious right hand because only you can do that for us, Lord. We love you, King Jesus. We worship you. We love you because you're worthy. Everybody said.
the God. Cause you're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Put your hands tonight as, as we praise our King. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Thank you for the freedom that you give us, Jesus. Let's declare we sing. As you stepped into my Egypt, and you took me by the hand. And you watch me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. Oh, I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. Because you stepped into my Egypt and you took me by the hand. And you watch me out in freedom. Into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. Oh, I'll sing of all you've done. Who did this swallowed up forever by the fury of your love? Cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! You're the God, because you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And you have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, oh you're the God, cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah, and you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church, can we just thank our God? Because that's who he is. He is faithful. He's leading us. He's given us the victory. Because greater is he who is within us and he who is in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Exchange you all for us. I gave my words to give you blood. Seems hard to believe. You're telling me it shows the cross. You're telling me you're worth that much. That's the measure of your love. How else would I see? But completely, deeply, so that's a silly abandoned. I'm completely feeling hands to ceiling in air. My one life can never match your surrender to me. 
surrender all to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. No power is for sure. Oh, I've got nothing Could I express all oh, my gratitude? Oh, I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must say. Praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much 
but I'm nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah hallelujah I've got one response I've got dress song rise from within you let a new song rise to the king with gratitude in our hearts we sing to you jesus oh come on my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song come on church you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the lord oh we sing it out so come on my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song because you got a lion inside of those lungs oh get up and praise the lord so come on my soul oh come on my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song because you got a lion inside of those Open up and praise the Lord. Oh, oh we surrender. Oh, we lift up a shout of praise. We lift up adoration to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, I surrender. Jesus, all to Him. Oh, I surrender. Oh, 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 I surrender. All to Him, I freely give. Oh, I surrender. Oh, you deserve it, Lord. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Ah, come on, church, can we just sing it to the King? Oh, and I know, and I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a King. Set for a heart singing Hallelujah Hallelujah Oh, King Jesus, be glorified. King Jesus, be lifted high in this room. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you this morning. We praise you, Lord. We exalt you this morning. You are here, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are here, and we honor you this morning. We take notice of you this morning. We bow down before you this morning. 
We do not take for granted that you have come into this place. We bless you this morning. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. This morning, I'd like for us to go to the Lord in prayer. Keep praying for Homer Bilton this morning. He's had knee replacement. And uh, he said he'd probably be here next Sunday. John Baker, he's had a situation this week. He's here today, but he has had a situation this morning, and they got him fixed up for another 10 or 15 years. So we give God praise for that this morning. Also, little Silas uh, is having surgery this week. Uh, let's believe God to be with the doctors that everything goes just perfect for little Silas. Also, Albert Wood is having surgery this week. Albert, before the end of the service, I want you to come up here and we're going to pray for you. He's having open heart surgery on Wednesday. And uh, good to uh, see Walter this morning. And he's with Tish, always. You know what? It's good to see you too. I don't take for granted any person here. Every person counts to God. And that gives me reason to love you and cherish you. Thank God for you this morning. Let's pray for these. Lord, we give you praise today. Lord, that you are our healer. You walk with us. You care about us. There's not a need in this place, Jesus, that you don't know about and that you have not walked through. And Lord Jesus, we give you praise for that this morning. We ask you today to touch maybe Silas. Lord, that everything, everything that is done in this surgery would be beyond expectations. And Lord, that you would take care of the rest, that the healing of, of this baby would take place through this. We ask, Lord, that you touch Albert this week, that you touch him, Lord, through this surgery, open heart surgery. We give you praise, Lord, that you gave John Baker the intuition to go and get something checked out and it was taken care of. You, 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 you were in this all the way through it. We give you praise for that. Thank you, Lord, for Homer today that, that uh, healing has come to his body through this knee surgery, Lord, and, and uh, he has many miles to go for the kingdom of God. Touch every person here today, Lord. Let the blessing of the Lord be upon everyone here. And Lord, we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is the Sunday after Easter. Last week was amazing. Today is more amazing because it's today. So look at somebody this morning and say, you sure look good this morning. You can shake their hand and you can just talk to them. Amen. Good things are happening around here, aren't they? I tell you, last week, my heart, my heart just, just leaped. When I was preaching, and these little kids from Children's Church, they came in last Sunday, and uh, about five or six of them here in the front row, and before I could get something out, they were telling the story. I would ask a question, and they would answer it. I thought, we need to have them in here more often. Boy, they were, it was amazing to hear the, the kids coming up with, with answers and giving scriptures. and We're thankful. I'm thankful for a children's pastor, but I'm also thankful for parents who teach their children because that's where it's got to come from. Church is not the place to give all the, the life lessons to the children. 
It's a place that we support the families in that. I was thinking this week, I've, I have a cousin, just a few months difference in her age, and she passed away this week, and she asked me if I would preach her funeral. And uh, we've been very, very close all of our lives. My family is a very close family. My immediate family and my cousins, we've just been close all these these years. And I was just uh, just thinking, thinking that uh, you know I cut my teeth on a pew in a, in a church. Literally, they used to show me where they were. I said, "Well, good." I'm glad they grew back. I want these children to cut, they won't cut their teeth on our pews, but uh, since we, we don't have pews anymore, but uh, I will tell you this, my first memories were at church. I'll, I'll tell you something else. When we all, all the cousins got together, we would get together, one of our parents would have a birthday party and we'd all come together. Do you know what we played? Yes. What? Church. Yeah. And Rita, who just just passed away, and I'm, I'm doing her funeral Wednesday, she, let, she reminded me that she was always the sinner. And, uh, and she got, I said, you weren't always Rita because sometimes they voted me to be the sinner that day. But Rita, they, they would always, she said, they always voted for me to be the sinner. Was Judy had she was a piano player, and to this day she's the piano player. Ronald Gwynn would be the preacher. He's been pastoring back in Oklahoma for 35 years, still pastoring. I would get up on the cotton trailer, the one bale cotton trailer. It was about this high up, and I'd get up there, and that was my pulpit, and I'd preach. You know what I would do? I did what my pastor did, yell. So I did ah. I thought that was the anointing, you know. But I didn't have a clue, didn't have a clue that I would ever be doing it in real time. Never, never even thought that could even possibly happen. Because since I couldn't talk very well, I just yell. You can, everyone yell good. You know, yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, the church has been a big part of my life. And I'm thankful this morning that church is still the biggest part of my life with family now. Amen? You, uh, some, of you, some of you go along with that. Some of you, some of you didn't have that, that privilege, but you get to change that legacy into your generation. And that's going to be an awesome generation. That uh, Whether they play church, uh, you know, it's gotten so complicated now that you can't just have four or five have church because now you've got to have the sound man, you've got to have the videographer, you've got to have the, you know, all these other things you've got to have. Back then, preacher, piano player, sinner. <laughs> we could, man, we could do we could do church all day long with three people. And poor Rita got saved every Sunday. <laughs> every 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 time we did. Church, he'd get saved. <clears throat> People mean something to us, don't they? And uh, add to our lives. Well, I'm going to ask the ushers if you'd come at this time. We're going to wait on you with your tithe and offerings. God bless you. Now, if you are here for the first time, I've seen several this morning that I don't recognize you. You might have been here last Sunday. I don't know, but if this is your first Sunday here, there is a card in front of you. I believe it's in red. If you would fill that out, the biggest thing I want to know is your name and your phone number, but uh, you can add anything uh, to that because uh, these days uh, a, a text is, is good, but a phone call is good also, but uh, we, we want you to know that we're glad for you to be here, and uh, if you're looking for a church home, this is a good place to be. Good people here. The bad people all are somewhere else. I don't know where they are, but they're not here. Everyone here is are good people. And uh, God bless you this morning in your giving.
Let's look to the Lord and uh, give him praise for this. Lord, we thank you today that everything we have is yours. You gave it to us. And now, Lord, we trust you and we have faith in you as we return to you that what you have asked us to do. And, Lord, as we give our tithe and we give offerings and because of our heart for missions and reaching this world, going into all the world and preaching the gospel, Lord, I thank you that we can give this morning to missions. Lord, that all of this is involved that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ prosper and grow and expand. We thank you that we're a part of that this morning. And we give you praise for it all now. Blessings and blessings be upon the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sammy's coming. Amen. God bless you. Man, we hope that you're doing well today. I just have two very quick announcements this morning. We will have senior lunch tomorrow, so if you are here, if you wake up on time, we'll have some lunch for you, and it's going to be a very good meal, so please make it. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's going to be very good. Uh, and then secondly, uh, we've been talking about doing things together over the past four weeks on Bible engagement, and the very last one was talking about serving. And one of my prayers has been that we as a church can do that together. So we've uh, we got some opportunities uh, within our church. We have a great team already in the back of people. Um, but there's been some people that have been uh, going out and and for great for great reasons. Some of our Kalapa people are going overseas and stuff like that, and it's just been awesome. But they've been the one that have really held it together. But we believe that there's people within the church that, that are able to, to do these things. So we need some help in the back with Susie and with the kids and with the toddlers and with all these kids. So if you've been looking for a place to just serve um, and to help out the church in, uh, this is an opportunity for you. If maybe you say, well, I don't really like kids. They're annoying. It's okay, all right? Um, there's other opportunities. You can stand at the front of the door and you can open it and greet people. Um, there's so many ways that you can serve, and maybe the Lord has just placed that in your heart, so we are encouraging you. Um, there's a QR code up here that you can scan with your phone. If you don't know how to work any of that, you can come and talk to myself, or you can talk to Cindy or Susie, and we'd just love to get you plugged into, into one of these serving capacities. Amen? All right. God bless you, church. Thanks, Sammy. Last Sunday, Tomas came into my office and said, do you know where the cards are? That We have a, a card that tells who the person is that's uh, doing the, uh, the greeting. And uh, Thomas, I don't think, would mind me telling you this. He's, he's either 82 years old or he's about to be 82 years old, and he's one of our head greeters. And uh, thank you, Thomas, for shaking hands with people and being friendly to them. Amen. Amen. Thomas doesn't say, been there, done that. He's, he's there doing it. And uh, so are you. We, we thank you for everybody for what you do. If the only thing you do is warm a pew, warm a chair, that's awesome. Thank you. Because if you weren't here, that chair would not be warm. Neither would God be able to speak to you. And this morning, this is going to be a tough topic. It's one that uh, I don't know how many times I would preach on this just normally. But here's what it is. Jesus helps us with our suffering. Jesus helps us with our suffering. Now, I will tell you this. We need to know that. We need to know it. Now, I have heard through my lifetime, I've heard altar calls that would say, if you'll come to Jesus this morning, you will never have another problem. I have seen people leave the church disenchanted because they didn't get their problems all solved and they were wondering what they had done wrong. You have done nothing wrong. Everybody has problems, saved and unsaved, good and bad, young and old. Everybody has problems. And your problem is the worst. It's because it's your problem. You know what I'm saying? They say, you know, my, my surgery is major and yours is minor. You know, 
uh, because, uh, well, I'll, I won't go in for that. But uh, we, we, will, we think about our, uh, the, the things that we go through, the thing is, major or minor, it's real. It's just, it's real. And uh, so we're going to look to the Lord this morning because if you're here this morning and you're going through a, a battle, um, the Lord wants you to know, I'll just go ahead and tell you right up front, Jesus knows what you're going through because he's already gone through it. Now let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you this morning of all that you did at the cross. I thank you this morning, Lord, that it wasn't just to die on the cross for our sins, so much more. And Lord, as we get into this this morning, I ask you to, to speak and to touch people's lives and hearts that no matter how desperate they are in the situation they're in, that you will reach down and touch their hand and let them know that you're walking with them through this time, that you are a compassionate God, you are a loving God, and you will see us through whatever it is that we may be going through or what we may go through in the future. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We give you praise this morning that you walk with us and that you understand everything that is going on with everybody. We give you praise for it. Holy Spirit, comfort your people this morning. Comfort every person that when they walk away, many can walk away with their problems solved because of healing because of deliverance, because of your answer to prayer. But those who walk out, who still have a, a, a infirmity, a disease, a challenge, let them walk out with their head up, knowing that they're walking out with you. And you are our hope. You are our only hope. And we thank you that you are our hope. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to Hebrews chapter 2 this morning. <clears throat> this is, uh, I could have preached this on Easter Sunday because it goes along with Jesus dying on the cross and being raised from the dead. I'm going to read my main text first, and then I'll go back to uh, verse 14. Here's what Hebrews 2 and verse 18 says. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are tested. Isn't that good? Since he has gone through all of this. We're talking about this morning the, the incarnation of Jesus. Uh, let me go ahead and just read verse 14 through 18. And get the, the picture of this. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood, for only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the, Son of God, that the Son did not come to help angels, but he came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be merciful and a faithful high priest before God. He, then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Our Lord on earth was man. He became human. Verse 11 said he was a man among men. He partook of the same in verse 14. 
The doctrine of the incarnation is threaded through the entire Word of God. The revelation of God, the incarnation is woven through the whole Bible. From Genesis all the way through Revelation, it's woven through it. If you remove the doctrine of incarnation, the whole Word of God falls apart and is of nothing. The incarnation is the thread that holds the Scripture together and holds the life of the believer together this morning. The Old Testament begins with a promise. The seed of a woman in Genesis. It goes on to state that he should be the stock of Abraham, the tribe of Judah, the family of David, born a virgin in Bethlehem, be a man of sorrows, bear chastisement of sins, and, your, uh, and, and pour out his soul unto death. Then it closes with a declaration that he is about to come. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back soon. According to some prophets, maybe tomorrow. So when you have your solar eclipse glasses, you might get to see the whole thing. Because we wouldn't want to hurt your eyes when you go up. I'm not making light of the rapture of the church, but I do not know when that's going to be. I'll tell you what I'm looking for tomorrow. I'm looking to go to look up with my glasses. By the way, you and the seniors that are coming tomorrow, we've got eight sets or eight glasses if you want to look at them. I think we've got them. Uh, but anyway, you can use mine. But uh, I think it lasts a few minutes. But uh, that's not my notes. Uh, I, I really, that has slipped by me about the eclipse. I'll tell you something about the eclipse. Of all the things that they figured out about the eclipse, it lets me know again that God's got everything in control. And so that kind of goes along with my message this morning. If Jesus comes back tomorrow, or if it's another 100 years, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be with Jesus. That's awesome, isn't it? So it closes with a declaration that he is about to come and, and that his coming should be preceded by his forerunner. Then uh, the, the Gospels come in as the counterpart and fulfill, uh, fulfill all that, that was going to happen and that there is not an epistle which follows, which is not based on the fact with which Paul opens his epistle in Romans chapter 1. Here's what he said. I shared this last Sunday. I'll share these verses again, especially verse 3, and I'll, 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 I'll just tell you when I get there. But verse 1 of Romans 1, this letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through, through his prophets in the Holy Scripture. Here it is, verse 3. The good news is about his son Jesus. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line. And he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. You get that? Okay, he was born in King David's family line, but he was shown, see, he was a son of God. He was also a son of man. So all of his life, you know, when he was a kid, he just played just like the other kids. When he was baptized, he was baptized also, the, the Holy Spirit came upon him, and that's when his earthly ministry began. But when he died, he showed to be the Son of God. Because verse 4 says, and he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what he has done for them, so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. And you are included among the, those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. I am writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. 
May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. That's powerful. What, what Jesus did for us. Now verse 15. Only in this way could he set free all who lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Before Jesus came, there was great fear in dying. The Gentiles feared because to them it was over at death. There was nothing else because they were Gentiles. Jesus, God, God came for the sinners, for the, for the, to, to, to create the, the Jews, the nation of Israel. But even the Jews didn't know for sure what was going to happen. So there was a great fear when people would die. And so in, in verse 15, he said, Only this way could he set free all who, had, who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Fear of dying is one of the worst fears, I believe, that could be. I love being at the side of someone who is dying, who is a believer in Jesus Christ, because God waves over them this, a, a death visitation that they know that when they breathe their last breath, they're going into the hands of God. If you don't feel that this morning, it's not because you're not saved. It's because you don't have dying grace. You've got living grace today. So if you're going through some things and you say, Jesus, just come on. No, Jesus, hold my hand and let's get through this and let's fulfill all that you've got for me. Amen? Does that speak life? So here's what happened. When Jesus died, again, in verse 15, only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to, to the fear of dying, to die on the cross. Here's what had to happen. Jesus descended first into hell when he died. Psalm 1610 says, For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. Jesus died and rose again. Three days later, he did not rot in the grave. Acts 2.27 quotes Psalm 1610. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. Where did Jesus go? He went in the lower parts of the earth. Ephesians 4.8 says, That is why the scriptures say, When he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice it that it says, He ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lower world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens that he might fill the entire universe with himself. He went into the lower parts of the earth. What did he do then? He captured the righteous souls from Satan, leading them captive to heaven when he ascended on high. Again, from, from Ephesians 4 and 8. Psalm 68 tells us that this, 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 this prophecy is fulfilled from the prophecy of uh, from Psalm 68, 18. When you ascended to the heights, you led a crowd of captives. You received gifts from the people, even those who rebelled against you. Now the Lord God will live among us there. And Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, didn't he? Aren't you glad that the New Testament doesn't just start with Jesus? Jesus is all the way back to the beginning of time. He's threaded throughout all the scriptures. Again, you remove that thread and the whole, the whole thing comes apart. It, it can't make it. Before this, before this happened, what Jesus did, all righteous souls went into Hades or Sheol, along with the souls of the wicked. Everybody went to hell or Hades. 
there were two compartments. I won't read it this morning, but Luke 16, verse 19 through 31, tells a story about Lazarus and the rich man. The rich man did not have compassion on Lazarus. Lazarus was a good man, godly man, loved God. So when they went to Hades or Shoal, they both went. But there were two compartments there. One was torture, and the other was not torture. The rich man said, if you would just let the, the Lazarus touch his finger in a bucket of water, or some water, and put it on the tip of my tongue, it will give me relief. Let me tell you something this morning. You don't want to go there. You do not want to go there. There is not a sin on this earth that's worth you losing your salvation over. There is not a relationship on this world that is worth you losing your salvation over. There's nothing in this world, nothing is offered to you that is worth you losing your soul over. So what happened? They go immediately now to heaven at physical death to wait the resurrection of their bodies. 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, Yes, we are fully confident that we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. Philippians 1, 21 says, For to me, living means living for Christ, and dying is even better. But if I live... I can do more fruitful work for Christ. Hey, if you want to live, keep producing fruit, okay? Let's, let's stay busy. But if I live, I can do more fruit, be fruit, more fruitful work for Christ. So I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. But for your sakes, it is better that I continue to live. You see, the wicked will continue to be there and go there. The torment will continue to them until the end of the millennium. Then death and Hades will deliver up the wicked souls who will be united with their bodies in the resurrection to be judged. That's in Revelation. I'm going to read that. Revelation 20, verse 11 says, and I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence. I'm, I'm not reading this this morning to scare you, but I'm, I'm reading this this morning that we need to take people with us. There are people, you know, I just had a thought that some of you have been have this list of about 10 names, 10 names, remember, that, uh, that you had of some people in the country back in the other side of the ocean. How many of you still have those names? Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. But what we did is we, we wrote these names down to start praying for salvation. One of those went to church this morning. And he was scared to death. He was fearing what might happen when he came face to face with Jesus. His brother is already a believer in Jesus. Prayer works. I could stop right there and preach that from now. That's awesome. Okay. The earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. Verse 12, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the, its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. The death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death, and anyone whose name is not, was not found recorded in the book of life, was thrown into the lake of fire. Make sure your name is written in the, lake, in, the, in the book of life this morning. Amen? 
Well, let's look at verse 16. We also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. In other words, Jesus didn't come in his heavenly realm. He came down to this earth as the lineage, from the lineage of David. You remember several times in the Bible they say, Jesus, son of David? What they're doing is they're, they're identifying Jesus with what this, the prophecy said, that Jesus would come out of the lineage of David from the root of Jesse. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So they, do, they, they were, uh, Paul, he sums up his argument about Christ being better than angels, declaring that he did not take on the nature of angels, but became the natural seed of Abraham. This is the only way that Jesus would be able to see us today as we are and walk side by side with us in our troubles and our sufferings. It was necessary that he, would, that he made in all things like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest, the Bible says, in the things of God to remit their sins by his own atonement and to represent them in time of temptation. So Paul shows us, he shows the Jews that Christ had to be made a human being and that he came from Abraham according to the flesh, that he would be one of their people, that redemption could, could not have been possible otherwise, and that the Messiah had to suffer to redeem, and that he was able now to help and deliver all men who are being tempted. When I'm talking about tempted, that does not mean necessarily tempted from sin. It's tempted to give up. It's tempted to wonder if Jesus is really the Son of God, if Jesus really cares about me. Verse 17, therefore it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. If you think this morning that the only good news about Jesus, and it is good news, that Jesus came to earth, died on the cross for our sins, that we might have everlasting life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. If that was all there was to it, that would be amazing. But that's not what it's all about. There's more. And that is what Jesus went through so that he could walk with us through this life, that we can walk through this life successfully. And that when we're through with this life, we will spend eternity with him. You're not on your own this morning. Whether you're a part of a church or not part of a church, you're not on your own. You're not on your own because Jesus paid the debt of humanity. And this morning, there's not a problem in this sanctuary but what Jesus does not know about and understand. So Christ's humanity is the result of his desire to be more than a savior from sin. Let me see if I can. This is, there's a lot, a lot here in verse 17 and 18. That reconciliation for the sins of the people is not the central idea of these verses. That has already been dealt with in scriptures before. Here, we have a new thought, a new plan, a new, a new thought. And here it is, Christ's ability to give assistance to the tempted. Our Lord's humanity could not make him a merciful and faithful high priest. He was already that. But this proved himself to be a compassionate high priest. The word tempted, again, is not the meaning of 
to elicitation to sin. Christ in the endurance of trial, he was made in all things like unto brethren. That is, he passed through every class of human suffering. Every class. Let's look at some of them. There were the sufferings which came through human frailty. Christ had no sin, but he experienced those forms of suffering which innocent human nature is exposed to, such as poverty, weariness, dependence, pain, fear of death. We get through our trials more easily because we do not foresee them, but Christ foresaw them, not only for himself, but he foresaw them for us. And they were intensified as he drew nearer to the cross. He, 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 he prayed and sweats as of blood came out of his forehead. He asked the disciples, would you please, just, just one hour, could you pray with me? There were the sufferings which came through his holy nature. Can you imagine this? The Son of God coming down to this earth for 33 years and experiencing the constant, continuous pain of the world, the ungodliness of the world. 33 years in a world of sin, it must have a continuous pain on the Son of God. Suffering in the presence of evil is in proportion to our holiness in reversal of, of, to, to evil. Christ not only saw a world wandering away from God, but he knew what was ahead. He not only saw the malice on one's faces and the guilt in their lives, he read the thoughts and the intents of their heart. And still, worse than that, he felt the hot breath of the arch temp uh, temp tempter on his cheek when he kissed him, and he heard the whispering of his faithful or hateful people around him. There were the sufferings which came through his love to man, the pain of sympathy. If love has her deep joys, she has too her deep griefs. If she wears a crown of triumph, she also wears a crown of thorns. Love is afflicted in all the afflictions of her beloved. What must have been the sufferings of immeasurable love in witnessing the woes and pains of man? This entrance or endurance of our trial proves that Christ will be merciful and faithful in his position as high priest. Let me just tell you what he's doing as high priest. As high priest, he represents God to us in his compassion and love. He represents us to the Father, representing us. He represents us to God, and he represents God to us, bringing us and our Father face to face, a loving God. This is what Jesus has done for you and me. He cared so much about our griefs that in order to allay them, he passed through them himself. We cannot doubt his heart after that. This is what it does. It enables us to trust his sympathy. Jesus does care about what you're going through this morning. He feels your pain. You hear people say that, but Jesus feels your pain because he went through it so that you can understand how to go through it. It enables them to expect aid from him. I'm going to say that again. Knowing what Jesus has done for us at Calvary became man, we can now expect him to give us aid. Why? Number one, because he knows what you're going through. 
Number two, he went through it himself to aid you, to lead you, to get through it. If you're having the worst day of your life, let's get through today with Jesus. Let tomorrow take care of itself because he will lead us through it. And at the end, he will take us home. And we will be him with him forever. It enables us to anticipate victory through him. I'm going to get through this, and I'm going to win. This is not the, this is not the big one. This, this, excuse me, John. This, is, this isn't, it all worked out for good for you, but boy, I don't know about me. Yeah. No, he's going to get me through it. He's going to get me through it. He's going to get you through it. My, 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 my physical, my fi he's going to get us through it. And, and I've, I've got even a better thing to say to you this morning. I mean, all of this, not, it's not better. Through all of this, Jesus still heals. Through all of this, Jesus still delivers. Through all of this, and what am I going to do this morning? I'm going to pray for Albert Wood, and he's going to get through this with flying colors through Jesus Christ, whether he has to have surgery or whether Jesus just takes care of it. Jesus can do it. But one thing about it, we're going to go through it with him. Can you imagine going through it without him? Worship team, will you come? Thank God this morning. You don't, I, I don't know what you're going through today, but I'll tell you what, we, none of us know what we are going to go through tomorrow. We don't know. Well, Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing. You know, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about, you know, Jesus has gone through exactly what we're going through. Well, he didn't do it because he was the son of God. He did it because he gave up his position with angels and joined the seed of Abraham, which you and I are from. And because of that, Jesus won. And today, we win. We cannot afford not to win. I read the last chapter. I read the last book. I don't want to be a part of that last book. I want to be a part of the one who, when he calls my name, he can say, John Murdoch, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's got to be. Think of the worst sin you can think of. Think of the worst person that you can't stand. Think of the worst think of the worst poverty you could go through. Think of the worst nation you could live in. None of it, none of it even comes close to what God has prepared for you. We are wealthy people. We just haven't gone to the bank yet. If I'm going to walk on streets of gold, which really means nothing to me because I don't have any now, gold is good. I'm sure it is. But how good is it going to be if you get to walk on it too? It's going to be good. But the one who made it is the one I'm going to go for. King of kings, Lord of lords. God is looking down this morning. Let me rephrase that. Well, I can say that, but. Jesus is looking down. And if anybody here says, Lord Jesus, do you understand what I'm going through? Mm -hmm. And we, because we're people of faith and power, we want Jesus to deliver us from him. Now, when I was reading the other day, and she asked me, she said, don't y'all start calling me this, okay? Pastor John's good. She said, Junior, 
when I got 6'5 and weighed over 100 pounds, I decided I'd go to John. But growing up, I was a junior. She said, Junior, would you, would you preach my funeral for me? I said, oh, no, Rita. God's going to bring you up. Jesus is going to heal your body. You see, I have to talk like that because that's what the Bible tells me. You pray the prayer of faith. You pray the prayer of faith. I said, I'm going to pray, and we're going to believe God. We're going to believe God. And I did. I believed that Jesus healed her. However, I felt quickened by the Holy Spirit to say, Rita, let's talk a little bit about heaven because it is real. And we're going to go there. And it's a good place. And there's no reason to fear because of that. So I got to talk to her and her children for a few minutes about heaven. Within 10 hours, she was gone. Just something happened. I thank God that I got to see her, talk to her. None of us know about tomorrow. But that it doesn't matter to me if I know that I'm in his hands. That doesn't mean I'm going to live haphazardly. I want to live. I enjoy life. I love life. I would love to see every one of my grandchildren raised. I would like to see, I would like to see this church revival that I've seen for 25 years in here and in here. I would like to see that revival take place in this church that, that travels to the north, the south, the east, and the west. I'm enjoying planting seeds in the north, south, east, and west. You know why? Because we're going to need those buildings when revival hits. And it's going to spread like wildfire. I'm not sure I get to see it, but I'm living for it. I'm believing for it. Thursday night, House of Prayer started at the Assembly of God Church in Spur, Texas. It's been closed for 16 months. Ten people came in to pray for the city, to pray for the churches, to pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers. I didn't even get to be there for it because something more important was for me that night. I had to come and watch Shaley preach on Thursday night. And I wanted her to know, even though she's not here today, I wanted her to know that she was of utmost importance to me over any ministry that I have. If I'm right or not, I don't know. But somebody took over. Chad Germany took over. He was there. He wanted to see it. Ten people came in, and they prayed. Over 200 people on, on Facebook signed up that they would pray for Spur at 6.30. Thursday night. I would dare say more prayers went up for Spur Thursday night. Let's water that. Let's plant seed there. Because when revival hits, it's going to be a direct target. You can call me a fool, but wait till I'm dead, okay? Until then, let me have fun. Because Jesus is alive and there's nothing impossible with him. Nothing, nothing is impossible with him. How do I close with that? Since he himself has gone through suffering, testing, he is able to help us when we're being tested. Has this helped anybody this morning? Just raise your hand. Has this helped anybody? Is, is anybody this morning going through something right now that's just, this is just good news for you? Jesus is compassionate on you this morning. You know what the devil will tell you? You deserve what you get. You know what Jesus says? I went through that so that you could go through it successfully. We serve a mighty awesome God. What a mighty God he is. What a mighty God he is. Hmm. I'm gonna, worship team's going to gonna sing a song, sing a worship. And uh, if you need healing this morning, aren't you glad Jesus didn't say, well, you're just going to have to go through that, and I'll go with you through it. No, he said, bring the sick, and I'll and pray the prayer of faith, and I will heal them. If you need, 
If you need deliverance this morning, Jesus can deliver you. If you have a need this morning, Jesus can do it. But if you're going through something that only you are going through and you, you're having to deal with yourself, then let's go to Jesus. Say, Jesus, you, you have felt this. You understand this. You're my high priest. Would you, would you help me through this? Would you give me grace today? Would you give me favor today? Would you, would you give me just something that I can just shout victory over? And when it's all over, I won't forget to thank you for what you did. Okay, I'm through. If you want to come to the altar, if you need, if you want to do that, you can sure come to the altar. Just everything's open, okay? And I want to sit here and I want to pray for the sick. I'm going to pray for deliverance. I'm going to pray for whatever you need this morning. And I'm going to believe for your healing. I'm going to believe for your the touch of God on you. i uh-huh. 